Hello everyone. Uh, so I decided to start a, a new series that I'm calling Good Comic Reads. Um, there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, I uh, Well, so first a little bit about what it is. Um, I, I, would, I want to highlight comics from mostly from the past um, that are easy to get into um, and cheap. Uh, I'm not going, going to be highlighting things that like are really long runs, uh, mostly things that are sort of self-contained and easily digestible. But more importantly, things out there that maybe you haven't heard of, or maybe you have and didn't have any interest in it. Uh, but but definitely things that are are easy to get a hold of and and rather inexpensive. There's a lot of really good stuff out there uh, that that you can get on the cheap, um, particularly from uh, the the eighties and nineties. And I know I said the 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 the, the dirtiest word in comics, the nineties. Uh, but there is some good stuff out there. Um, and I, I figured this would be a good time for this um, with uh, uh, new comics being on hiatus. Uh, these might be books that you could find um, from local comic shops and back issue bins um, on eBay for, for cheap and, 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 you know, in, in, um, in chunks um, or other online sellers. So if you're running out of comics to read uh, because new comics are drying up, these might be some good alternatives um, for for you, uh, and again, and hopefully, not hard to get and and not expensive to get. Um, also, the, I mean, there's a lot of older stuff that I read that I don't really get to talk about because no one else is reading the stuff that I'm reading. Um, I mean, not not saying that I'm the only one that knows about it or whatever. It's just not a lot of people today reads are reading stuff actively from. Um, um, from, you know, 80s, 90s, I mean, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, I think a lot of people focus on Silver Age stuff, which is great. I, Silver Age is my favorite age as, as well. Uh, but I, I feel that there are a lot of things in the, the, particularly in the 80s, mid to late 80s, that don't get a lot of love that, that should. Um, and I can highlight those here. Uh, so the first thing... Uh, for for this this first episode, um, I'm going to talk about volume two of Cloak and Dagger. Um, this is volume two, so volume one was a four issue limited series, which which is also very attainable and very good. Um, I'm I'm talking about volume two because one, I just finished reading it today, uh, and two, it hasn't been filed, so I can show it easily. Uh, I, I'd have to I'd have to go dig out my volume one cloak and dagger, and I didn't really feel like doing that. Um, but uh, this it's it's an eleven issue run, um, so it's it's not difficult to get all of it, uh, and it's not difficult just to read through it in maybe a couple of days, depending upon you know people read comics at different paces. Um, some spend some more time on the art. Um, some just kind of read it. Um, and some people just read in general at different paces. Um, so, I mean, you could, if, if some people, if they focus on it, they could probably knock it out in a day or an evening uh, for, for others. Um, you know, I, I took my time with it. Um, I, I read it over the span of um, three or four evenings, I think, um, but with some other stuff mixed in. Um, but 11 issues total. And it is not hard to get, and it is not expensive. Uh, before I started making this video, I found uh, a, a sold listing on eBay for all 11 issues for under $12. Um, I didn't look at active ones, but I, th that just that goes to show you that it's not an expensive run. They're not in high demand, but it's a really, really good story. Uh, and it's for the most part, all 11 issues tell a single self-contained story um through throughout throughout the the run there's some detours here here and there um there's a detour the actually the, the second to last issue uh was really good um they find themselves in latveria uh so the the whole idea is well cloak and dagger's whole thing is um their their mission is to wipe out drugs uh because drugs were forced upon them when they were 
uh, they were runaways, and that's what gave them their powers. So their mission is to have no, so no kids have to go through they went through. So eliminate all like all all drugs, um, and they get they get caught up in a particular group of drug dealers, and they decide like we're gonna trace this all the way back to its source. So there's some travel that that goes on, and they they find themselves in Latveria at one point. Um, but that's the gist of it, and I I'll say, especially considering that. Um, it's, I mean, they're teenagers. It, it, it is stated that, that Dagger is 16 when this starts. At one point she mentioned she's 17. So she, I mean, it, this came out in 1985, went to 87. So yeah, she's going to have a birthday in there, but she starts out at 16 years old. She's young. Um, uh, it's very dark. It's a very, very dark story. Uh, first of all, it, I mean, it's surround, it's, it's, uh, uh it's around the, the concept of, of, the mob and drugs and the drug trade and it gets into weapons trade and all this other stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite dark. Um, and the position that that dagger is in, like, I want to, I want to talk to her and, and, and she is, she is surrounded by people that are, that do not have her best interests in heart. Um, that, they, they think that she's naive and can be taken advantage of for other people's own purposes, Cloak included. Uh, and, and Cloak is probably the biggest um, uh, one at, at, at fault for, for doing this. And when you're reading it, you're almost, it's almost maddening because my, my original perception before reading this is, you know, Cloak and Dagger, they're in it together. They have an agreement and all this. And I mean, they kind of do, but it's very clear that that cloak keeps dagger around for his his own ends, um, his his what he says is his love for her. But again, it's it's almost the same love that abusers would would profess for for people. It's very one sided, uh, and again, it very it's very very dark. Um, and I I don't know if you know it was written in 1985. I don't know a lot about um, this this author. Um, that 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 wrote them. Evidently, it's it's who created them back in. It would have been um, spectacular Spider-Man sixty-four. Um, I've I've never heard his name anyplace else, and it escapes me at the moment. Um, Start with an M. Uh, is it a product of of the writer and the time where, like, it just seemed normal, but reading it now, it's like oh. No, she was like all of her relationships that she is currently in and gets in and has been in have been abusive. Uh, and you just feel sorry for her. Like she wants nothing more than to be an ordinary teenager, an ordinary girl. And she she has the ability to do so, right? Cloak Cloak has it harder off. Like he, he cannot pass for a normal person. Um, his His body is blackness. His... The cloak is like part of him. He can't put on normal clothes and walk around. Dagger can. And she wants to do that. She wants to be that. And every time she tries to or um, gets uh, persuaded to do that, Cloak brings her back in and says, no, you're not normal. You can't do that. Uh, well, and no, it's not true. He can't do that, but she can. Like, he needs her to be around to satisfy his own misery, like, like that misery loves company sort of thing. Um, and it's, it's not, it's something that, that, that you see between the lines, but it's not talked about directly, um, in the book. But, but once you read it and see how he talks and, uh, how he kind of, you know, the, the, the internal dialogue he has with himself, it's like cloak is not good. He's not good. He's out there trying to do these things for, in the name of good and, 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 um, take out drug dealers and things like that. But, the way that he's doing it, how he's conscripted Dagger to be there, and she has to be there, and is is forcing almost forcing her to be there. Uh, even the one person that um, who, who who's trying to well, one of the people is trying well, actually, throughout the story, there's two people that are trying to get her away from Cloak um, to to let her like you can be your own thing. You 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 you're not the monster that cloak says that you are to, to make you feel tied to him. 
um, you get really good feelings about these these two characters. Like they're trying to help her, they're trying to get her away, they're trying to let her realize her dream of being a normal teenager. But even in the end, it's like they were. It wasn't for her. It was for them. They were bad people too. It's it's just the heart really goes out to the character. Um, but it's. Uh, aside from that, just being a lot deeper and darker than I expected it to be, it's it's a it's a good story. There's a lot of um, talking about, like, you know, what are we doing when we when we when we kill people? Or are we as bad as they are? Uh, what's the line? Um, what is our requirement to try to give these people a second chance instead of just taking them? Um, and and their, their, their powers are really interesting. Uh, actually, there's a really good uh, part with Doom. So so daggers things are light daggers. What they actually do to you when they hit you is that they are supposed to be... They, they, they bathe you in the, like, the light of goodness that contrasts to the evil inside of you and that causes you pain. That's an interesting power. They're not just like, oh, this is hard light or something like that. Like It's, it's an emotional thing. Uh, so if they hit somebody totally pure, they wouldn't do anything. Um, so in the issue with Dr. Doom, uh, she hits them, she hits Dr. Doom with them and it does nothing to him because in Dr. Doom's mind, what he's doing is not evil. <laughs> it's completely the right thing to do, even though it's like take over the world, it's taking over the world for the betterment of the world. Uh, so it was a really cool little use of the power and a glimpse into the mind of doom. Um, whereas cloak on the other side is darkness. He can bring people into his, his cloak and they sort of experience it's the other side, right? Instead of seeing, experiencing what they could be, but, but with the light or how they're, they're, they're not the light. They experience the dark that they are. Um, and all the evil that they have done and inflicted upon others is put on them while they are consumed by the cloak. Um, in, in case you, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's, that's how the powers work in, in this run. Um, I don't remember it being that fleshed out in the, their limited series. And I'm not sure how it is outside of, you know, going forward. Um, but it's a, it's a really interesting interpretation or, or set of powers. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun reading it. It, they did, it did come out and it is 85, 87. So it's that sort of copper age. It takes a little while to get through an issue. They're 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 kind of wordy. Um, the 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 art is 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 beautiful um, all the way through. Um, I think I think um, let's see. And it doesn't say it in the in the um, credits, not credits, but the whatever. Yeah, I think some of the covers starting at seven um, are by Mike Bignola. Uh, so I, I noticed when I was looking at a cover. I don't know how well you can see this. Um, Bignola. Uh, it's, Mike Bignola is the only Bignola that I know of. <laughs> uh, I, and I didn't, I didn't uh, think to, to look it up before um, starting this. Uh, video, um, but that that's just the exterior art. The the interior it's not in the interior art. Um, but that, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, if I'm wrong, let me know in in, in the comments. Um, and I, I'm not familiar enough with Magnola. Is that his is that his, his signature? I don't know, but I, I I can't think of any other Magnola. So, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, I I. I Rate it very highly. Highly suggest you go, you go ahead and, and pick up um, a run of this if uh, if you can. Um, if you can only find some issues, I would wait to read it until you can get all of them because it again it is a, a full story throughout the um, the entire run. Um, it starts off a little bit chunkier with with oh this can kind of be self contained or two three issues, uh, but once it hits its stride, it's obvious that this is this is one arcing story. Um, but yeah. Highly recommend. Um, check it out. Uh, and um, I'll see you next time with uh, 
with another uh, see what else I can I can dig up and start reading uh, while we don't have new comics to to uh, to occupy our time uh, so like comment subscribe and uh, we'll see you then thanks bye this video was brought to you by Titan comic pressing follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Titan comic pressing LLC